if you're working toward becoming a fully independent musical artist who writes, records, and distributes your original music and plays live performances to promote it, then you've probably already realized that the key to success is thinking like an entrepreneur. You have to be just as good at the business part of your career as you are at the creative part. But how exactly do entrepreneurs think? In this episode, we're going to give you a bit of a head start by sharing a 10-part business plan template that almost every startup follows. In future episodes, we'll dig into more detail, but for now, hopefully, this can help you create a general framework for yourself. Sorry for the interruption, but we're excited to announce that we now have a relationship with Guitar Center, one of the largest musical instrument retailers in the U.S. If you'd like to financially support our channel, then please use our special link in the description below to make your next musical instrument purchase from Guitar Center's online store. We'll give you more details at the end of this video. Now, back to the show. First and foremost, you have to think long and hard about what kind of artist you want to be and what you want to achieve. Don't start at the end goal like, I want to sell out Wembley Stadium. Instead, start at the beginning by trying to remember why you started playing music in the first place. Then reflect on why you're doing it now and what is motivating you to want to do it full time. Be brutally honest with yourself. Do you like telling stories? Do you get a high from the raw energy? Do you savor the challenge of continual self-improvement? Do you enjoy collaborating with other musicians? Do you feel satisfaction when others enjoy your music? It's also okay to admit certain potentially negative drivers. Do you think it will boost your ego? Do you want to get rich, famous, or powerful? Do you want to travel the world? Use all of this to envision your future self and then try to capture it in a statement like this. I want to be a songwriter, singer, and musician who is respected by fellow musicians. Or, I want to have fans around the world who listen to my music and turn up to hear me play. Or, I want to produce a prolific catalog of music that people still remember well after I'm gone. Whatever it is, make it your guiding light. Write it down and display it somewhere you can see it every day. This vision is what will align everything else in your business plan because these elements will help get you toward that ultimate goal. With a long-term vision in hand, the next step is to try to identify a gap in the market or a pain point for a specific target audience. Ideally, you should try to quantify it as much as possible to assess if it is big enough to support the rest of this business plan. For example, you might think that there is an unmet demand on YouTube for all women ACDC tribute bands from Thailand. With some research, you can try to figure out exactly how much demand there may be and determine whether it will be enough to get you to your long-term goals. This is the fun part, because now you have to figure out exactly who you are as a product. Are you a singer, songwriter, guitarist? Are you a note-for-note -note classic rock cover band? Are you a Scott punk trio? Are you a solo acoustic folk singer? Whatever it is, you have to make sure that you're filling the gap you identified in the prior section. You are a solution to a market problem. Try to be as specific as possible. Also, if you are part of a band, then you absolutely have to get unanimous buy-in from every member of the band. Other than greed and jealousy, this is the most common cause of band breakups, and it is frequently referred to publicly as differences of creative direction. Next comes a scary part that no entrepreneur likes to do but is critically essential. You have to identify your competition. Everyone likes to think they are unique, but there is no such thing as no competition. Especially in music, where fans have such a wide range of choices and it's difficult to build a solid fan base, try to be as brutally honest as possible, because it may lead to you deciding to reassess your entire business plan. For example, if you want to start a note-for-note -note classic rock cover band, then you need to research and find every successful note-for-note -note classic rock cover band out there. You should probably also identify other relevant competitors, such as general classic rock cover bands, classic rock tribute bands, and any popular original artist who frequently does classic rock covers. Once you've laid out a comprehensive competitive landscape, you can figure out exactly what is going to set you apart from all of them so that you'll stand out to prospective fans. This is called your unique value proposition, or UVP. It is the one thing you've got that no one else has. For Jimi Hendrix, it was his guitar prowess. For Billy Joel, it was his songwriting. 
For KISS, it was their brand. For the Grateful Dead, it was their community. Whatever makes you you, that's your competitive advantage. Now you're going to have to figure out what products or services your music business is going to sell. After all, you can't be an independent artist if you're not earning money to pay for your music career. This will require you to think about every possible source of revenue, such as streaming videos, ads, sponsorships, merchandise, live shows, and so on. The most difficult part of this exercise will be coming up with pricing for everything, because you'll have to make sure that you're making enough money to cover your expenses. You certainly don't have to launch all of your revenue streams at once, but even at the start of your journey, it will be good to have a sense for where your money will come from. This may help you figure out which revenue streams to prioritize and the order in which to roll them out. Now that you've got your products ready to go, you need to figure out how to best get them into the hands of people who will pay you for them. This may be fans, sponsors, partners, or others. This is where you would develop your branding and messaging, as well as your social media and PR strategies. You will likely also consider going on tour, cross-promoting with other artists, and participating in affiliate marketing programs. It's time to put it all together into an implementation plan. You need to answer the complex question of who's going to do what in which order and on what timelines. There is no set way for how to represent this, so just do it in a way that works for you. Whatever mechanism you choose, the important thing is to set up something that will allow you to track your progress. In the day-to-day -day struggle of running a business, it is way too easy to lose sight of the milestone achievements. You can think of this section of the business plan as the map against which you plot the route you want to take toward your ultimate goal. Okay. This is the section every musician hates, but you're not alone. Very few entrepreneurs like dealing with numbers like this. However, creating solid financial projections is by far the best way to make sure that you fully understand every single aspect of your business. You can't put together this part of the plan without having a solid grasp of your revenue streams and your expenses, which all depend on the other sections of the plan. So what exactly are we talking about here? Ideally, you should try creating a spreadsheet that calculates your estimated revenues, expenses, and profits for, say, the next five years. Obviously, you have a much better handle on these numbers for the near term, like, for example, the next 12 months. After that, your crystal ball will get quite hazy, so you'll just have to make some assumptions. The critical part is not really the numbers themselves, but rather the assumptions you make in coming up with the numbers. These are what you'll be reassessing as you move forward with your music business. Every entrepreneur has to force themselves to go through this painful process, which will probably take up to 90% of the overall business planning effort. However, when you're done, you'll have a tool that you'll be able to use over and over as you grow your business. Whether you are a band or a solo artist, you will still need to come up with a team to support your business. These could help on the music, such as fellow musicians, songwriters, sound engineers, producers, and editors. They could also help with other creative efforts, such as branding, marketing, and merch design, as well as video-related skills like videography, video editors, lighting, costumes, hair and makeup, and set design. For a musician, perhaps the most essential team members are the ones who shore up any weaknesses you may have on the business side, such as finance, legal, sales, and logistics. At first, you probably won't have any money to pay any of these people. That's a common hurdle for any entrepreneur. However, the hallmark of a great entrepreneur is the ability to lead people via inspiration. As a musician, you're probably used to this because your music probably already provides inspiration. In the beginning, you'll have to rely on family, friends, and fans who want to volunteer for you just to be a part of your early career. You'll have to learn humility in order to accept that kind of generosity from people who believe in you. As you start bringing in money and can afford to pay for part-time or even full-time help, you'll have to figure out a staffing plan that you can roll into your implementation plan and your financial projections. At that point, you'll start becoming more of a manager since you'll effectively be the CEO of your own small company. Then the challenge will be how to create the kind of team structure that keeps you from getting stuck in a management quagmire so you can maximize the amount of time you spend on being a creative musical force. 
After you've created the entire business plan, you need to figure out exactly what your immediate next steps should be. This may be difficult since you just spend so much effort creating a plan for the next five years. However, as the saying goes, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Try to create a bullet list of four to five specific tasks that you'll need to take in the next 30, 60, and 90 days. This will give you and your team a clear path forward, at least to get you started. One more thing, you should know that creating a business plan is not a one-time thing that entrepreneurs do when they start a new venture. It is a never-ending process that you will have to revisit many times throughout your career. This could be on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis, or even when it is driven by a particular event, such as a band member quitting or a major label knocking on your door with an offer. For now, please use the comments to share your own thoughts or ask questions we can answer for you. Until next time. As we already mentioned, our channel now has an official relationship with Guitar Center, one of the largest musical instrument retailers in the U.S. If you're in the market for a new instrument, then Guitar Center is the place for you to find a wide selection and discover great deals. They offer new, used, and vintage guitars, including bass, acoustic, and electric guitars from Gibson, Fender, Ibanez, Epiphone, Martin, and so many others. You can also get strings, picks, amps, effects pedals, and other accessories. Series. Despite their name, they also offer drums and keyboards, as well as recording and DJ equipment. In other words, there's something for everyone. If you want to financially support our channel, then please use our special link in the description below to make your next purchase from Guitar Center's online store. It's a win-win for all of us.